Good afternoon, everyone, and Happy New Year. Uh, it's Dr. Galvin. So I've been a little bit absent the last week or so, the end of the year, um, between crazy numbers in the hospital and my clinic, it just kind of got away from me. And plus, you know, it's the holidays. I didn't really want to bum everybody out on a bunch of COVID stuff. But it's the first of the year. It's time to look forward into hopefully a much better 2021. But, you know, I think we've got to temper our enthusiasm because there's a, a, a number of things that are happening which have got me somewhat concerned. So we're gonna talk about a couple of things. We're gonna talk a little bit about the numbers um, that are going on. I'm gonna talk about my personal experience with immunization. I realized I posted it to Facebook, didn't post to YouTube, but I was immunized on Christmas Eve. And I'll tell you about my experience and a lot of my emergency medicine partners and nurses and, and many, many people I know have been immunized. And I'll give you a little overview of that. Um, and also I'm gonna talk about um, this COVID variant and what it might mean for us going forward because I had a very concerning discussion with an emergency doctor in London yesterday that kind of, you know, got me a little nervous. So anyway, start with the numbers. You know, we, we hit the new year and 20 million new cases. We've had three, nearly 345,000 um, deaths. And, uh, you know, yesterday alone, you know, we had 3,400. And we've been above 3,000 deaths now for the last few days you know, a few days. And I think that that, remember, we talked about this before, those big spikes we saw post Thanksgiving, well, those people are now probably starting to die because it's weeks, weeks, weeks later that you start seeing the deaths. Um, with nationwide, we have an 11.7% positivity rate. We had 227,000 new cases yesterday. In North Carolina, um, we currently have 3,472 people hospitalized. That's the most we've ever had since this started. Just to give you some perspective, on November 7th, we had 1,100 people hospitalized with COVID statewide. Now it's at nearly 3,500. We've had 63,000 people vaccinated so far in the state, not very many. Um, we have a 13.3% positivity rate here. So let's talk about immunizations. You know, so far we've immunized about 3 million people. I had my immunization on Christmas Eve. I got the Moderna uh, version. And my personal experience, I, I had the, uh, it was done in the cafeteria at the hospital. Got the shot, they made us wait for 15 minutes. Had like a momentary flush, like maybe five, 10 minutes after the thing. Felt a little flush for about 10 seconds and I was gone. And my arm was a little sore, kind of like a tetanus shot the next day. And that's the extent of my, my side effects and symptoms from it. Um, many, you know, most of the doctors I know um, that work in the emergency department or in the hospital, many of the nurses, we were all in the sort of that first group. Many, many, many of them have been immunized have not heard anything other than the sore arm is pretty universal. A couple of people had some very like body aches and, you know, but beyond that, nothing bad. I spoke to the nurse who's giving the vaccinations at the hospital. They haven't really had any major allergic reactions. You know, we're gonna see allergic reactions. You know, if we gave, uh, you know, if we gave 3 million people, every one of them, we gave them one shrimp, you know how many allergic reactions we'd have from that? Given the shellfish allergy is between 0.5 and 2.5% of the population, that would be between 15,000 and, and uh, gosh, like 60,000 um, allergic reactions, just giving them a shrimp. So we've had, you know, 10, 20 allergic reactions reported from the vaccinations, maybe a little bit more, but tiny a number. And you had to realize as an ER doctor, we take care of allergic reactions all the time. I don't, you know, allergic reaction is easy to fix. Um, people rarely ever die from that. It's a very brief thing. And almost always they've had a prior reaction to something. So allergic reactions do not bother me at all. Um, generally, I haven't heard anything bad about the vaccine so far. I've talked to people who've had both the Pfizer one and the Moderna one. So, so far, so good with that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what to expect going forward because, you know, I think there's a sense that, oh, the vaccine's here, we're finally through this, but realize it's going to take us a significant amount of time to get a good portion of the population immunized. So we are about, have a three or four month window where things are really not going to change. And it's concerning because, you know, people got together for Christmas. You weren't supposed to, but you did. We all know that, We, you know, um, and I see on Facebook, everybody together with their families and all that stuff. Well, the problem is that, you know, people got exposed at Christmas, you know, kind of that viral load was increasing, increasing. And then, you know, New Year's was last night. Now though, all those people that got exposed probably aren't really showing symptoms yet, but they're very infectious, now mingle for New Year's. And so in about two weeks from now, we're, we're really worried about seeing a really big surge in cases. Um, and, 
you know, we saw it after Thanksgiving. We're, you know, and right now, you know, that surge from Thanksgiving has not stopped. We're still getting pummeled in the hospital, bed capacity issues, everything else, and we're worried that it's going to get worse. Um, I want to talk a little bit about this variant of COVID that you guys have probably heard about. First showed up in England. Now has been, you know, has been documented as being in Colorado, Florida, and California. Probably much farther reach than that. So I happen to know an emergency physician, Dr. Lyons, who is an ER doctor in England. He actually works in Scotland and in London. Um, he runs a major transport ambulance service, meaning they, they fly and, and transport patients back and forth in that region by helicopter and by ambulance. And what he told me was, was very sobering. He said to me yesterday that what they're finding is that the new variant is between you know, 70 and 150% more contagious than the old variety. The disease isn't the same, he says it's just old, same old COVID, but they are getting overwhelmed. There are hospitals in London that basically have 30 ambulances waiting in a row for up to eight hours, waiting to drop people off to the emergency department. And we're starting to see similar things in California in terms of prolonged waits to even get into the emergency department because the whole place is filled up. Um, the other concerning thing that he told me is that the new variant, the six feet distancing doesn't seem to help um, very much. It seems to be much more airborne. People are catching it outside and many people are catching it in home or rather um, in stores and in restaurants. And they're also getting it in the hospital. And so it's a big deal and we've got to do everything we can to kind of minimize that risk. Now, I want to talk to you why this is concerning, why it's actually worse for it to be more contagious than it is to be more deadly because it's not any more deadly. So I'm gonna take, there's an article in the Atlantic and I'll try to link, link to it and they did a really good explanation. And it's basically what happens when you have exponential spread. And we have exponential spread of the disease in this, in this country. And so if you take a um, virus and let's say that in, it, 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 infectious fatality rate is similar to, to SARS-CoV-2, like point, you know, uh, 0.8, you know, so 0.8% of the people that get it are going to um, get infected, end up actually dying. Well, if you have 10,000 people, that equates to 129 deaths in the course of a month, okay? Now, if you increase the lethality of that virus by 50%, then that increases the death rate to 193 deaths at the end of the month, okay? So we went from 129 to 193. So it's, you know, it jumped up, but it's not, you know, huge numbers. However, if you increase the transmissibility and you leave the, fa the, the fatality rate exactly the same, but now what happens is you have a much higher number of people with it. You know, at the end of a month, uh, if you increase the, the transmission rate, the, the infection rate by 50%, at the end of that same month, you have 978 deaths because so many more people have it, even though they're dying at the same rate. And that's what we're talking about. You know, we're, we're being told 70 to 150% more contagious. So you can see how this can quickly, quickly get out of control. So this is not the time to, you know, let your guards down. This is the time to really, really be careful, especially if you're vulnerable. But he's also telling me they're taking care of a lot of young people, 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds. He says that they're actually, they have ICUs that are so full that they're actually requesting retired doctors and nurses to come help prone patients, meaning that when we have them in the ICU, we have them face down because they breathe a little bit better. And they're actually doing that in the emergency department uh, there. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about vaccinations, a little bit more about this variant as the week, you know, later on in the week. Um, again, I don't want to bum people out. It's the, you know, it's a new year. I, my feeling is if people get vaccinated and I understand there's, you know, strong feelings that I think are really based in fantasy because the data just doesn't go, it doesn't show there's really any harm for these vaccines, especially an mRNA vaccine. And I'm gonna do a video about that specifically and address it um, uh, uh, later, probably next week. But, you know, if we get that vaccination done, if we, get, if we follow these guidelines of trying to wash your hands, if we can do everything we can to limit the spread of this new variant, you know, three, four months from now, we're gonna probably get to the point where we know people immunize that it's gonna start making a difference. But you know, right now, we've immunized about 3 million people in this country. Percentage-wise, so that's 0.84% of the country. And we, we think 70, 80%, maybe a little bit higher is required to kind of knock this out. 
if we can follow through, if we can get the vaccinations to, into people's arms and get it done, then you know, very, it's very possible by the summertime, we could kind of be you know, getting back to some normalcy, but don't fool yourselves. We are gonna have a very, very difficult time over the next three months. Protect yourselves, like I always say, Protect yourselves, protect your families, protect those around you, wash your hands, wear a mask, do our best. You know, I wish everybody a very, very happy and healthy new year. Again, I wish I had a little happier message to spread today, but um, I, you know, I, I'm trying to, to let people know, you know what's really going on. I'm gonna be in contact with Dr. Lyons some more if, he, if things change uh, overseas, I'll let you know. Um, we're also, had some contact with some folks in the Dominican Republic and apparently they're very concerned now. They've got a lockdown that's so severe that you're not really allowed to leave your house after 7 p.m. during the week and after noon on Saturday and Sunday. They're in a hard, hard lockdown in the Dominican Republic. Anyway, take it easy. I'll talk to you soon. Happy New Year.